Hello, everyone. Welcome to ITS 140. Um, so today we're going to continue. Class right there. Today we're going to continue our discussion of um, arrays. We started that on Tuesday. So we will just continue um, with that topic. Okay, also, I, I want to remind you, Tuesday is fall break. Next week is fall break, Monday and Tuesday, so there will be no class on Tuesday. And then we will meet again on Thursday. Uh, it's possible that, you know, I'll, I'll decide at the end of class today, but I may not assign any homework, given that, you know, we have this break. Uh, I finished grading the exams. I posted your grade exams, so you can take a look at those. Um, um, make sure I, I, I usually put the number of the question and then how many points you lost for that problem. Um, I thought the exams were good. So, you know, uh, I think one thing that I noticed actually is that everybody did well when it came to writing the code on your Jupyter notebook, like in Python, and that makes sense. And that's one of the things that we wanted to add in this class was the Python component so that, you know, <laughs> you always, always have a concrete thing to look at. So, mo you know, pretty much everyone did well on that. Some of you didn't do so well on the flow charts, so you probably lost points on that. Uh, oh. And sometimes, I'm going to mute your microphones, okay? And... Um, so definitely work on, for those of you that lost points on the flowchart, sometimes I'm sure you could have done it well. It's just you didn't do the graph. You know, you, did, you just did not a good graph at all. And I mean, it's, you know, it's just an effort thing. So I would say practice those because the graphs are not gonna go away in the class and you don't wanna lose points that you would otherwise just get Easily, I, I thought w when it came to the logic questions, everyone did well. So, so I'm glad about that, most everyone. So um, certainly take a look at your exam, make sure you add up the, the points and everything. Uh, if you have questions about the exam, just email me. And if you would like to discuss about it, uh, we, can, you know, we can do it during our office hours. Okay, um, so that's it. As far as the exam, so the, the exam grades should be posted for everyone. Um, so that being said, then we're going to just, um, today I think you have a homework assignment, right, loops. So make sure you, you submit that. Um, I will probably just do a, you know, a little bit of a lecture today, kind of finish up what I was doing with arrays, given that there's no lecture uh, Tuesday, right, because of fall break, then that way we can just dedicate next Thursday to just doing labs. But today I'll do a little bit of a, a lecture, and then after that, I'm just going to open up the lab. Uh, if there are any questions about the homework or anything along those lines, okay? So let's go ahead and I have Brightspace here. I'm just going to download the slides. I'm going to go to content. And as I said, we were looking at arrays. I posted the PDF for arrays, so that should be there. But like I said, there, will, there won't be homework assignment. This week, I'm just gonna assign it next week. Kind of give you a break there. And so let, me, let me just download the slides and see where I you know, kind of left off on Tuesday. Can't really remember. I'm going to open up both of these. All right. 
right, so. Let me, let me share. So we'll share the old slides first, the older slides, the more general ones. So you should be seeing the slides now, hopefully. And if I look at this, so I remember, you know, we went over this basics, array basics. We covered uh, on Tuesday, I mean, uh, we covered partially filled arrays. We went over this. Um, before each loop, I talked about that as it relates to Python. Uh, for each example, searches, we started talking about that, you know, how, how interesting it is to look for a value. And then I think we did a Python script where we obtain the index and the value. We covered that already. We did uh, accumulating and averaging. We did that. Highest to lowest, I remember that we did, um, you know, we were looking for the highest and the lowest. So we did the, the script in, in the Jupyter Notebook. So you should have that available. Oh, one thing about the exam that I'm going to ask you, it's great if you submit everything like in a SIP and you can submit your Jupyter Notebooks, but please always make sure that you put, you submit one report, PDF or Word that has everything in it. Okay, so that I'm going to ask you to do that because if I have to look for things, like if I have to, okay, answer one, two, three is there, it just makes it harder for me. And, you know, I may miss something, right? And you're going to lose points. So if you have everything in one single report, you know, one exam, PDF, Word, that's the best approach. You can have screenshots and then you can have also um, the Jupyter Notebooks. If, if I need to look at them as well, you know, I can do that. Right, but just certainly I want to stress going forward, do that. I think I had told you about that for homework assignments, but also make sure you do that for exams, right? Just submit, uh, definitely always submit one report with everything. All right, so we covered this parallel arrays, we talked about that. Multi-dimensional, we kind of just uh, introduced this topic, you know, we, before we get into that, we're going to do more of the one-dimensional arrays, but certainly we looked at it. Uh, we talked about how to iterate through that to two, four nested loops. We talked about how you can have even higher dimensions, three dimensions and so on. All right. Yeah. So we got through all the slides from the old book. So now then, I think that that's where we left off actually. So now today then we can start with the new slides. Like I said, you know, given that we don't have a lecture Tuesday, then we can kind of make this the lecture for Tuesday. Uh, obviously, we've covered a lot of this, so it's not going to take us long. And then after that, I'm just going to open up the floor. You know, you work on your lab. That's due today. All right, so let's see. Let's, uh, I need to share this. I somehow lost my map. All right, so you should now be seeing the Python slides. Okay. So we'll take a look at these. So lists, so notice that the name here changes a little bit, right? So it's called lists and tuple. And it's sort of the same idea as an array only with a higher abstraction. So what you might imagine is, remember that Python is C, C++ in the background, right? So Python is kind of above that. It's an interface to C, C++. So it's a level of, of abstraction that's higher, right? So in, in, in terms of abstraction, you know, it's higher. 
And if, if you think of the low level idea that you have a rays and kind of a low level, then you might kind of infer from that that in Python, arrays are a slightly higher level of abstraction than arrays, and they're usually referred to as lists, right? And or tuples, right? And they're, you know, basically, uh, they're kind of the same mechanism, except a list can be of, of a really large size, dot, dot, dot. Whereas a tuple, usually, you know, two items, two poles of three, right? And they're very handy actually, because a lot of the time when you're doing things in Python, et cetera, you, only, you, only, you need to grab objects that are pairs, right? You know, like a key value pair, for instance. You have the key, which is the ID, and then the value itself. Or you have the key, the name, and the value. You know, it's like ID 0001, name hammer, value, you know, 350 each, you know, so, so it's really that idea. But at the end of the day, these are really nothing more than arrays. You know, you, they, they are basically, they can be iterated through, they, they have indices. So it's the same idea. They're just, as I, as I was saying, a higher level. So this is a higher level of abstraction. Okay, higher level of abstraction. That's the only thing, um, but it's kind of the same thing. So usually whenever you're talking about Python, eventually you'll just use the term list for the most part and you know, just be aware of that. As you take other programming classes in this program in particular, when you take your C++ class, <coughs> C Sharp, <coughs> PHP, etc you will see that there are various ways of doing arrays. Certainly at the lowest level, when you do C, C++, you'll see how arrays work, All right? But in this class, we're just kind of gonna, you know, you know I've, I've already covered really the basics of arrays, um, high level logic of them. And I'll probably do some examples, you know, uh, next week, um, or, you know, if you have any questions today, um, but really, you know, list will be where it's at, okay, as far as Python script. And you'll learn to appreciate lists, or lists are extremely powerful. Um, you know, I, I enjoy, really enjoy using uh, these structures in, in Python. All right, so let's go ahead then and continue here. All right, so the topics, as I said, some of these we've already covered, but we're going to learn about, you know, sequences, introduction to lists. We're, you're going to learn about a very, very interesting term called slicing, list slicing. And list slicing is, a, is something that I cover, or whoever teaches the class, Professor Taehui Kim probably, 265 will cover slicing. And then we have a class called 365, which would cover slicing. Uh, and then if you get more advanced into like the graduate level classes like machine learning and deep learning, you know, you would learn also about slicing. So slicing is a very efficient way of grabbing data from a data set or an array in this case. So for instance, let's say that I have uh, a matrix, right? So I have a matrix, you know, like the movie, The Matrix, right? That's where the name actually comes from, right? So it's computer data. And so you have, you know, columns, but then you have also rows of data and I call this matrix A, right, or M. So if I want to say I want to grab only the data in column 0, 1, 2, 3, you know, I'm going to say, but I need to also specify which rows I want, right? So I want all the rows. So if I want this column, that means I want all the rows, but only that column, right? So what I'm going to say is A. Notice that I'm going to index, but I'm going to index in a fancy way. For all the rows, I'm going to specify I want all of them. So I'm going to say colon. And, and then for the columns, I only want column two. And you see that? So this indicates all. This indicates um, just one. You know, I could also say, 
uh, I want columns zero and two for whatever reason. So then you can add another list in here when you do zero two. All right, so there's a lot of, a lot of very interesting uh, little tricks that we're gonna learn. Uh, that's where slicing goes. Uh, you know, today we're just gonna focus on the most basic things related to it. But it's extremely powerful because this is written, as I said, it's implemented in Python, but the binaries underneath in C, C++ are, are written to be extremely efficient. And so this is an extremely efficient way of writing code. As you will learn later on, even though you, you're only learning for loops, right, just now, for loops are actually a little bit inefficient when it comes to the computer. You know, they're kind of slow. And, but, you know, but still, I don't want you to under, I don't, I don't want you to think that for loops are not, you know, the backbone of programming. They are. I'm just saying there are other approaches that are, you know, even faster than for loops. And so as you learn more about programming, you're going to progress in that direction. But anyway, slicing is, is, a, is a component. <laughs> it just means extracting data from a list. Uh, there's also something called list comprehensions. We'll talk a little bit about that. It's just, fan, you know, very interesting. You know, how could you write code that, it, that, that is not like, you know, multiple lines? How could you write all of it in one line of code? Because that makes for shorter code, right? It makes your code, you know, more readable, simpler. So that's also a possibility. All right, so finding items in, in list with the in operator. So we've talked about that actually already. And then we're gonna talk about list methods and useful built-in functions. Like the append, you know, the append is one thing you should know whenever you're dealing with lists is how do you add items into a list? You append, you know, very much like you, you know, probably use Word or Excel and you learn about appending, you know, um, you're gonna do that here. When we do files, you can also read, write, and append to files. So all of it will be very interesting. It's really a beautiful language. I have to say Python is, you know, one, it's a language I really, really um, appreciate. All right, so uh, other topics, you know, copying lists, processing lists, you know, those are the kind of things we talked about in the other slides. Two-dimensional lists, look, two-dimensional lists, there we go. Uh, and then we have uh, tuples. Tuples are actually, you know, we'll refer to tuples in 350 when we do uh, a little bit of cryptography, you know, there, you know, it's just uh, nice ways of storing information in pairs, as I said. Dictionaries are not going to be covered here. The Python dictionary, which is a highly efficient hash table. Um, we're not going to cover here yet, but certainly before the end of the semester, I will present it uh, because it has incredible power um, for a lot of applications. Okay. So that's kind of the plan for today. So let's go over these ideas. Um, so sequence, you know, and some of this, like I said, I'll just kind of go through fast given that we've already covered it. Uh, so sequence, an object that contains multiple items of data, right? The items are stored in sequence one after another. So I think I, you know, I gave you this idea of a bucket and I, you know, and I like my analogy of a bucket actually. It's not a bad one, but really it's more of a pipe. It's more of a pipe, right? So you probably, or a tube, you probably, you know, if you play tennis, you know, you, you purchase these, right? You know, when, when you go to the sports store and it's got all the, you know, tennis balls, right? So it's, it's kind of like that because they are, you know, as, as the term implies over here, there is a sequence for sure. Okay, you can't really get to that one in, in some methods right away. You got to go sort of in sequence. You go to this one and that one. No. Okay. So an object that contains multiple items of data and the items are stored in sequence one after another. Python provides different types of sequences, including lists and tuples. 
The difference between these is that a list is mutable and a tuple is immutable, right? So we will see what, what that basically means. All right, so um, introduction to lists. All right, so list an object that contains multiple data items, okay? Multiple data items. An item in a list is called an element. You can see the, you know, I've, I've already done examples of this. You create the list and then you use the square brackets, right? And you always use the square brackets. <clears throat> when we use, when we do a dictionary, it'll use curly brackets, right? That will be the dictionary. But the, the symbol for the list is the square bracket. When we define a, a tuple, we will use parentheses, right? And so on. So those are the terms. And then in here, the elements, you have item one, item two, and so on. All right, uh, so it can hold items of different types, different types. Uh, print function can be used to display an entire list, so you, you can do that. There's, a, there's the actual list function. Uh, list function can convert certain types of objects to lists, right? So you want to, um, so you have a NumPy array and you want to make it into lists. You take that NumPy array and you do something like a, a dot list. And now it makes it into a list. You could think, for instance, if you had a string, okay, string one, okay, how could I convert that into a list? You know, that's kind of the idea. All right, so uh, we have here, for instance, <coughs> examples of lists in Python. You have even numbers, for instance, all even numbers, but we've seen already that they don't all have to be the same type, right? So a list of strings, you know, Molly, Will, Adriana, right? And then you have a list holding different types. So for instance, we call this one info, and it's Alicia27, and then some kind of a maybe salary, something like that. Okay. The repetition operator. Um, so the asterisk repetition operator and iterating over a list. The repetition operator makes multiple copies of a list and joins them together. All right, so um, the, the asterisk symbol is a repetition operator when applied to a sequence and an integer. Se sequence is the left operand, operand and number is right. So the general format is this. So it's like saying, you know, I have one, two, three times two, right? And so it, it it makes multiple copies of a list and joins them together. So the definition of that is, well, multiple copies of this would be, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, but then it joins them together as it's stated. So it ends up with one, two, three, one, two, three, All right? So that's, that's the idea. That's the idea there with, um, you know, the, <laughs> the repetition operator. This is used, I mean, I don't think you will be using it that much in the beginning or in general. Uh, usually when I see this, it's, it's fancy code um, that the people are using, but it's certainly one thing that, that is available out there. This is a much more common thing, obviously, to iterate. You can iterate over a list using the for loop, so for x in list, right? And we've done examples of that. Um, so that's certainly something you will do a lot of. Indexing, just like with any array, there's the concept of ind indices, right? The indexing portion. As you already know, in, uh, an index is a number specifying the position of an element in a list. It enables access to individual to an individual element in the list. Index of first element in the list is zero, just like in other approaches that we've discussed. And then second is one. The nth element is n minus one because everything starts at zero. 
Negative indices identify positions relative, relative to the end of the list. So it's almost like you're subtracting from the total. And so it, this allows you, for instance, whenever you want to read the items in the list in reverse, right? And I think we saw an example of this when we were looking at for loops. Uh, but this is certainly something that people use a lot. Uh, let's say that you have, you know, data. You know, you have, uh, you have data like this, right? And then you want just uh, all the items. You want all the, all the items, all the rows, but you only want the last element of that row, right? So then you do little tricks like saying all and then minus one, and it, it just gives you the last element. So this is something that takes, so don't worry about it if you don't understand it right now. Uh, certainly things like this take a long time to grasp in Python. Python is supposed to be very, you know, for very fast prototyping. And so it's got these little tricks that, you know, instead of having to write for loops and get to that last index, you can actually just reference things by the minus one and get the last index. So, uh, and, and that applies actually not just to the last index, but you can see you could also focus on this one, right? So it's gonna, so that one's gonna be minus two because it's not gonna be the last, but the before last. Okay, any questions about that idea? No questions. All right, so let's keep going then. The length function. So I think I've also talked about that one a little bit. Uh, length, as, as the name implies, it just gives you the number of elements in the list. This is very useful. Um, and you, you, know, you, you would definitely use something like this. Um, so whenever you, know, whenever you, if you use a, a, an index that is out of bounds, it's gonna give you an error. So to prevent that from happening, what you probably wanna do is you want to have the length function in there. Okay, you want to have length, which returns the length of a sequence such as a list. So here we have you know, length of my list, right? And that will give you then the size that you can later on use. It actually, the, the, length, the length function returns the number of elements in the list, not the index, not the last index available. So the index of last element will have to be the length of the list minus one. Okay, so just be aware of that. And as, it, as I stated, so this is useful so that you don't end up with an error, right? Because you're out of bounds. Lists are mutable. So if you remember, there was that you know, word in the beginning. So in a mutable sequence, the items in the sequence can be changed. Changed, All right? So uh, lists are mutable and so their elements can be changed. So an expression such as, such as uh, list item one, index one, new value can be used to assign a new value to a list element, okay? But you have to make sure that must use a valid index to prevent racing of an index error exception, okay? Concatenating lists, so concatenation uh, is, you know, I already did an example of that, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So concatenation, this applies also to strings, hello, world. Where these are two separate str strings. And then, you know, just like we have two plus three equal five, and that performs a mathematical operate operation, we can also do concatenation with the plus symbol. <laughs> so when you concatenate uh, as it relates to list, you join two things together, basically. The plus operator can be used to concatenate two lists. Now you cannot 
concatenate a list with another data type such as a number. So you, if, you have, if you have a number, so this is a list, but this is a number. Okay, so if you do, you know, right? So what this is saying is this one works, this one does not, okay? So you cannot concatenate a list with another data type such as a number. And then there are the, the augmented assignments. So the plus equal augmented assignment operator can also be used to concatenate lists. Okay. List slicing. So this is what I was talking about before. So list slicing is a span of items that are taken from a sequence. So slice, right? So like you slice a cake you know, you have a cake, right? And you kind of slice out a piece of the cake. So it's sort of the same thing with list, list of, you know, numbers, and then you just kind of slice out that piece out and create a new list possibly, et cetera. So that's really the idea with slicing a span of items that are taken from a sequence. Um, so here's the format of it. So you have a list and then usually what you, you know, you have the colon kind of indicate range and then you have a starting value and an ending value. Uh, span is a list containing copies of elements from startup to, but not including if start not not specified zero is used to start index so that's you know so like if you if you don't if you don't provide anything here you could give a list sort of like that or right and it just assumes that it'll start at zero if end is not specified then you just assume it's the length of the list is used to end the index so that's the idea that you don't provide anything there. So it basically this goes, it's the whole list from beginning to end, or you could say from two to four. And so now you have a shorter range. So two to four, maybe that and that, <coughs> nothing and nothing from beginning to end or combinations of that. <coughs> and slicing expressions can actually include a step value, <coughs> excuse me, and index um, and negative indices relative to the end of the list. So maybe you want all the items in your list except the last one. Maybe here, you want all the items, so you would just do something like that. And so minus one, all right? So that's kind of the idea. So this is very handy, for instance, maybe on the exam, I would ask you shift shift the numbers right shift you know I, I give you this example of shifting so i say you know, i have you know zero one two three four five and i have a b c d e f and i want you to shift things in some way so I want you to shift that one and that one. So then you would, you know, basically kind of decide, right? So where do I start? Where do I end? So you take out that one, right? And you, sh or, or rather, sorry, you're gonna need to add something here. So now some value, let's say zero there, and then, but then these need to be moved over here. So this becomes like that. You know, so that's what I mean by shifting. And those things can actually be done really easily with slicing instead of, instead of having to write a very complicated uh, algorithm for this, you know, they can quite easily be done with this. And so we'll see some examples of that later on. Any questions? All right, no questions. 
finding items and lists with the in operator. So we've talked about that one. Um, quite a bit, so it's, you know, I think it should be pretty straightforward now. You can use the in operator to determine whether an item is contained in a list. So the general format is item in list. Um, returns true if the item is in the list or false if it is not, right? So you can do if hello in my list. Oops. Right, so that's what that means. So it's basically, it's gonna look in the list to see if it finds that term, okay? So that's the general idea of it. Uh, similarly, you can use the not in operator to determine whether an item is not on the list. So that, you know, just if hello not in. So you plug that in there uh, and it's kind of the same, same idea. Pretty intuitive, I would say. Uh, list methods and useful built-in functions. Give, give me a second here. Right. So uh, list methods and useful built-in functions. So I, I talked about this one, the append function, right? So this is a very nice one, very useful one. Uh, let's say that you're, you know, you're, you're reading receipts, right? So we've done that example of today's receipts, old sales, and you kind of grab a receipt and you only want to store all the receipts that were above $100 for, for, for additional review. Right, so, so basically what you would do is every iteration, you look at the, the value of the receipt. If it's greater than uh, 100, then you have a list called special you know, interest uh, list, let's say. And in that list, you're going to what is called append. Right, so you just append and then you know, the value of interest to you value, right? So the append function allows you to grab a list and then just add items to it, okay? So it's used to add items to a list. The item is appended to the end of the existing list. There is the index function, index item. So again, this would be my list dot index, oops, index and then an item, All right? So it's used to determine where an item is located in a list. So what it returns is it returns the index, all right, of the first element in the list containing the item. So it could happen that you have a long list with 100 values, and then you have three items that have the same value. Well, out of all of those, it's gonna return the first match, okay? So that's why it says it returns the index of the first element in the list containing uh, the item. Questions? So if I was going to use the apprehend uh, function, so when I use apprehend item and I had a list of like a collection of weights, so I put like apprehend, a pen, like, a pen, oh, apprehend, a pen of like 200 and I add it to that list, that's right. So let's say you have a list, you know, you have a list, uh, list and it's got, you know, A, M, O. But then you get a new letter, R, and you want to add it to the list and you would say, and I'm going to say list one. So list one dot append. And then what was it? X. And then now you add the value. And now if you wanted to print this list again, it would be A, M, O, X. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got it. Got it? All right, good. Okay, so um, 
you know, so that, that's the idea for append and we have index used to determine, as I said, returns the index of the first element in the list containing item. Uh, and it could raise a value error exception if the item not in the list. Okay. So if you're going to get something like this, like this, where it raises a value error exception, if item not in the list, the thing you probably want to do first is say, is I, if item in list, and if that's true, then, okay, list dot index item, and then it'll give you the, so that you don't get the, the exception. Right, list methods and useful built in other built in functions. So we have insert. So, as you might imagine, insert takes the index and adds the item to that index on the list, used to insert item at position index in the list. Sort, right, sort, uh, used to sort the elements of a list in ascending order. <laughs> Remove. You know, remove items. So removes the first occurrence of item in the list. So the best way really to, to do these is, you know, to kind of create a list and then just play with all these, see, see the behavior of it. But as, it, as the name implies, it removes the first occurrence of item in the list. Reverse, this one just reverses the order of the elements in the list. So if you have A, B, C, D, E, you know, now you're gonna have the, invert, the reverse of it. All right, so this is kind of the same thing. So the same ones I mentioned before. List methods and use other useful built-in functions. So the del statement removes an element from a specific index in a list. So, you know, general format, del list, and then the index. Min max functions, they're built-in functions that returns the item that has the lowest and highest value in a sequence. So instead of doing what we were doing, if you remember, we wrote the code from scratch um, the other day. Instead of doing, doing that, you can also sometimes use the built-in functions. That's where Python really shines. Uh, it, it has a lot of built-in functions. And so you can really uh, take advantage of them. Okay. Right, copying lists. So to make a copy of a list, you must copy each element of the list. Uh, two methods to do this. You can create a new empty list and using a for loop to add a copy of each element from the original list to the new list. So you can do that. You can all, creating a new empty list and concatenating the old list to the new empty list. Right, so that's certainly, you know, one is uh, with a for loop, it's kind of have A, B, You know, I, right? And you're just kind of assigning from one to the other. And the other end, you have list A with values, and then you create an empty list. So it's almost like quite simply as if you had a pointer that, you know, kind of will just, but it's a copy of it, creating a new empty list, and you're concatenating it. So you're really, what you're doing is B concatenate A. It just so happens that this one was empty, so there's nothing there. So basically, B just becomes a copy of A. So copying lists, you know, here's the example of it. Uh, so it's, it's, as I said, it's like both of them are now pointing to the same thing. Processing list, list elements can be used in calculations. Okay, so to calculate total of numeric values in the list, use a loop with accumulator value variable. Okay, so that's just a variation of what we've been doing before. So before we were just reading values from the input, but now we can also do the same, just having the values in a list itself. can do the averaging as well. It's pretty much the same thing. All 
All right, and then list can be passed as an argument to a function. So we can certainly just, just like we in functions, we were passing variables. We can pretty much also do the same with lists. There's no, there's no reason why we can't do that. All right, and then a function can return a list as well. So that's the same idea. Now, as far as uh, this part here, writing to a file, let's not worry about that yet because I haven't introduced uh, files just yet. Uh, but um, there is an object. Just be aware that there will be a not when we cover that topic. To save the contents of a list to a file, there will be the file objects write lines method. Um, and so, you know, we'll talk about that. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so let's not worry about that. Yet. I'd rather not talk about it. All right, so two dimensional lists. Okay, so here, you know, just like, you know, kind of where we, the last topics in the, in the previous set of slides, right? We also have that feature in lists in Python. A two dimensional list, a list that contains other lists as its items. So that's really what it is. Um, so just like we've done lists of, let's say, one, two, three, dot, 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 n, right? We've done lists like that. Well, what this implies with two dimensional is that now we can also have lists of lists. You guys see that? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here we have you know, three lists within this big list. Okay, and so that's sort of the idea there. So two dimensional list, it's a list that contains other lists as its element, also known as nested, a nested list, which kind of ties into nested loops, right? That are also associated with two dimensional arrays. It's common to think of two dimensional lists as having rows and columns. Okay, so we can think of it Think of it that way because it's it's sort of like you could view this one if you wanted to sort of like this right so that one two three four oops, there should be a comma there four five six seven eight nine so in that sense it starts to become this idea of rows and columns right i'm referring to row one, because it starts at zero, and then in it, I'm referring to column two, right? So then you know, that value there. This is useful for working with multiple sets of data. And as you start, that's why, you know, as I said, you have a course called 265, that will be um, a required course. And, you know, this course deals a lot more with, with this idea of, um, you know, having data in there. It's useful for working with multiple sets of data. So Python is actually, you know, if you've ever heard of the term data science or the data revolution or, or things like that, you know, Python is a great language for dealing with data, right? manipulating data. It's got a lot of power and tools there. To process data in a two-dimensional list, uh, you need to use two indices, in, indices there. Um, so very much like we, we, we discussed in the previous set of slides. And we will, as I said, we will see examples. I'm not gonna assign a, remember, I'm not assigning a homework uh, this uh, weekend. Um, we don't have class Tuesday and so Thursday I will do I'll just continue with these examples in uh, the Python script. Today, I just really wanna get <coughs> through the slides. <coughs> so we'll typically use nested loops to process. All right, you can see that there, a two-dimensional list, got the rows, got the columns, All right? And then you can store whatever data you want in there. Usually this is gonna be more useful for data itself. I think 
for storing things like this, like names, we will use dictionaries uh, in the future, but for data, certainly lists are pretty useful. Right now, um, as you might imagine here, this is kind of what I had said before, right? You have a, uh, a list of scores, and then the implication is that um, the, the list scores oops, the list scores. Right, we'll have um, three values, right? And then if you want to reference them, it's zero, one, two. So technically then that's this zero, this one, and this two. And then the fact that this whole list is in the first row makes this value zero for it, okay? Then if we look at the second one, it's the, the same idea. We have scores, oops, again, Zero, one, two, those are the index, index positions. That's zero, one, two. Now this scores is in the, the second row, which is index one. And that's why this is one, this is one, this is one. And then we can see the same for the last one. That's a third list, which once again, is made up of three elements. 0, 1, 2, so that's this 0, that 0, oh sorry, that 1, that 2, and then this scores list is in the third row, which is index 2, and that's why that's 2, that's 2, that's 2. So in essence, let's say we call this one A, so then A is really made up of scores, 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 but where that's this one, this one, and this one. So they themselves are little lists. Notice that there's two, two square brackets at the end, one for the list and one for the for one for the scores list and then one for the A list. Are there any questions about this? No questions? All right. All right, so let's continue then. All right, tuples. So as you can see, tuples is the last topic that we'll cover today. You can see that there. Uh, tuples are immutable, an immutable sequence. All right, and you, you remember we saw that term before. Uh, so very similar to a list. But once it is created, it cannot be changed, okay? In structure, the structure of it. So for instance, here, tuple name, and then it's got the parentheses, and then it's got, you know, comma separated items, okay? The tuples support operations as lists, so they behave very much as lists, but because they don't use the square bracket like the list, and instead they use the parentheses, that implies that that's a tuple. Uh, supports operations as lists, subscript index, indexing for retrieval of elements, so here basically zero and one are the positions. Uh, and it does have methods such as index, uh, Built-in functions like length, min, max, all of that. Slicing expressions are possible, just like before. Just so, so it's very much like a list is what this is all, all saying. And it's got the in plus and the uh, asterisk operator. So all of these are available. 
But as remember that one of the big differences is not that it doesn't use square brackets, instead of they use just parentheses and items are comma separated. So this is useful, as you will see, whenever you have things like key value pairs. So <coughs> for, you know, key value in, you know, something, uh, list of keys, right? So you're gonna have a list of tuples there, right? And, and, and that's really the idea. So it's, it's things that are in pairs such as an ID and a name, you know, that kind of thing. All right. Uh, but they don't support other methods like the append, right? Because they're not, you know, you can't just add things to it, remove, insert, reverse, sort, you know, you, by, defin by the definition provided in the previous slide, we can't really change it. The advantages of using uh, the advantages for using tuples over lists, uh, you know, processing tuples is faster than processing lists, right? So, and again, as I said, the, the, the reason for that is remember that Python is built on top of C, C++. So in a sense, it's how they implemented the interface of tuples in Python to the binaries in C, you know. So that's kind of the idea there, that the intuition that whenever you're using a tuple, it has been very efficiently written code. So it's, it's, it's meant to be fast. Um, some operations in Python require use of tuples. You know, the list function converts tuple to list. Uh, the tuple function converts list to tuple. Okay. So uh, you will certainly use lists a lot more than you use tuples, but you will encounter them every now and then, and whenever you do, uh, you will basically, um, treat them as a list. That, that's really what I would say is that for the most part, you will treat them as lists and you will always just prefer to use a list, uh, to a tuple, but you will encounter them every now and then. All right. And that's it for the slides. Um, so as I said, all I wanted to do today, given that there's no class on Tuesday because of fall break. So if we look at the calendar, I'm almost certain that I'm going to double check again. Um, so let me share the Brightspace. Okay, so you should be seeing Brightspace right now. And if we go to huh, course website, we can see today is what? What date is today? Today is the 8th, right? October 8th. So uh, fall break is October 12th to the 13th, at least according to my calendar, which means there should be no class on Tuesday. So we've kind of gone over uh, arrays this week, October 6th, October 8th, and then next, no homework. I won't, I'm, you know, I'm going to give you off uh, this weekend and uh, on the 15th, basically, then we will continue this topic of arrays. We will do more examples of arrays, and then I'll probably assign a homework that's due on the 22nd. All right, so that being said, as I said, um, for the rest of the class today, I'm just going to, I'm gonna stop recording now because I'm not gonna give you any new material and I'm just gonna open it up to any questions you might have, catch up, kind of help you out with the lab if you have any questions. If you don't, you know, we're done for today, but I do wanna make sure that, you know, in the lab, we, you do have some lab time. Um, 
for me to ask questions. So as I said, I'm just gonna at this point break. You too.